It's been more than a quarter century since a seven-year-old girl was abducted from her home just over the border in Bowling Green, Kentucky. And her case is still a mystery to investigators. Morgan Bioli disappeared 26 years ago this week. The young girl was playing outside of her home with her sister, Nikki. Nikki Britt tells investigators she stepped away for just a moment to grab a jug of water. She remembers passing a maroon-colored van with its door open. Grabbed Morgan and uh, put her in the van and drove off with her. I heard a scream. I uh, came around. He was just sitting in the van. He smiled, and the other little girl was screaming and was going to through the apartment buildings. Ten-year-old Morgan Violi, taken from the same area of her apartment complex that her two sisters were playing in. When it he went for the FBI is offering a $25,000 reward in the cold case murder of a seven-year-old from Bowling Green back in 1996. Morgan Viola was kidnapped from the parking lot of her apartment complex 27 years ago today. On a sweltering Wednesday afternoon in July 1996, seven-year-old Morgan Violi skipped outside to play blissfully unaware that this would be her last summer. Her bright laughter echoed across the parking lot as she frolicked with her best friend, Destiny. But in an instant, Morgan's playful shouts turned to screams of terror when a mysterious man jumped out of a van and snatched her. Morgan was never seen alive again. Her abduction sparked a massive search and devastated a community. Yet even as thousands desperately combed the region, the little girl's killer slipped away undetected. Morgan's case turned icy cold, until a grim discovery exposed the horrifying fate of the stolen child. The investigation into her murder spanned decades, leaving her family trapped in an endless cycle of hope and heartbreak. Why was this bubbly child targeted by such unimaginable evil? And will her kidnapper ever face justice? Join us as we delve into the secrets behind the stolen summer of Morgan Violi, the little girl who never had the chance to grow up. Her story will break your heart and haunt your dreams, but we owe it to Morgan to search for the truth no matter how dark. July 24, 1996 began like any other summer day for seven-year-old Morgan Violi. The spirited little girl woke up in the modest apartment she shared with her mother and sisters in Bowling Green, Kentucky. As Morgan munched on her breakfast, she likely daydreamed about playing outside in the sunshine with her best friend, six-year-old Destiny. Things weren't perfect. Morgan's parents were divorced and locked in a messy custody battle, but the perky child powered through any troubles with positivity. Everyone who knew Morgan remarked on her vibrancy. She's real sassy, thinks she's 15, her father Glenn Violi fondly told reporters, very, very grown up for her age. Morgan had a talent for charming adults and rallying other children with her energetic spirit. Just the year before, she had been the only first grader brave enough to perform a spirited gymnastics routine in her school's talent show. As Morgan skipped outside to play that Wednesday, nothing seemed to miss. The colony apartments where she lived bustled with residents coming and going in the summer heat. No one noticed the burgundy van idling in the corner of the parking lot or saw the driver intently watching Morgan cavort with her friend Destiny. In a moment, their lives would irrevocably collide. The scorching afternoon sun beat down on Morgan and Destiny as they laughed and chased each other through the parking lot. They were lost in their play world, blissfully unaware of the danger lurking just yards away. Without warning, the side door of the mysterious burgundy van flew open. A man burst out, heading straight for the girls. Destiny froze like a deer in headlights as he grabbed her and tried to drag her towards the car. Somehow, she found the strength to pull away from the stranger's vice-like grip. Destiny sprinted for safety, then spun around in horror to see the man clutching her best friend instead. Little Morgan didn't stand a chance against her ferocious attacker. He easily overpowered the tiny child and hurled her into the passenger seat of the idling van. Then he vaulted over Morgan's small frame to claim the driver's seat. Seconds later, the van peeled out of the lot with Morgan trapped inside. Destiny's panicked screams alerted nearby residents that something was terribly wrong. Witnesses flooded 911 with reports that a man had just kidnapped a little girl. Police rushed to the apartments, but it was too late. By the time officers arrived, both Morgan and her abductor had vanished without a trace. As police took control of the frenetic crime scene, Morgan's family received the devastating news. Her mother, Stacy Violi, felt her world collapse when officers told her that Morgan had been ripped away right in front of her apartment building. It was every parent's worst fear come to life. Would they ever see Morgan's smiling face again? Or had she just been swallowed by a nightmare from which she'd never awake? 
Seven-year-old Morgan Violi, taken from the same area of her apartment complex that her two sisters were playing in. When it first happened, I kind of just went to bed on my own and just thought it was a bad dream. But you wake up and there's cops everywhere. The memories they had before July 24th, 1996 are good ones. Her smile. She's always smiling. She was beautiful. Friendly, feisty, smart. She was the best part of me. And in an instant, everything changed. Law enforcement mobilized every resource to find Morgan. Local police, state troopers, the FBI, even the National Guard joined the frantic search. Officers took careful statements from rattled witnesses like Little Destiny, piecing together a description of the mysterious kidnapper and his vehicle. Police sketches showed a white man in his 20s with greasy collar-length hair and several days of scruff. Witnesses spotted a second shadowy figure also inside the van. The burgundy vehicle itself stood out, covered in distinctive gold trim with a grimy white top. With dozens of witnesses and a detailed suspect description, investigators were optimistic they could rescue Morgan quickly. But as minutes bled into hours without any sightings, dread crept through the search team. Morgan's abductor had a big head start to get away and if he reached the nearby Interstate 65, he could vanish anywhere in America before police even began their chase. As the sun set with no word of Morgan's whereabouts, the FBI advised her mother Stacy to wait by the phone in case the kidnapper demanded ransom. But the call never came. With such brazen snatching of a child in front of numerous witnesses, investigators considered if Morgan's own family played a role. Her custody battle put Morgan's father, Glenn Violi, on the radar police asked him to take two polygraph tests. Glenn failed the first, but passed the second, yet he remained haunted by the suspicion, constantly feeling officers expected his arrest. It does get a little worse every day, Glenn mourned, but Morgan's mother Stacy insisted he wasn't involved. I didn't realize I was supposed to be in court that day. That's not why I took off early, because I didn't even know I was supposed to be in court. And that's kind of what made a lot of people think, you know, oh, he was, he was supposed to be in court. You know, his kid turned up missing. And I can understand why people got, you know, especially the way it's presented to them. As soon as I pulled up in there, I knew something was going on because there was police and just people everywhere. And she came over to me and she said, they, somebody kidnapped Morgan. And I said, what? They took Morgan, you know, and then she started, she was hysterical. To the point where I was living in a, in a building out back of my buddy's house because I couldn't find a job. Nobody wanted to work me. Nobody wanted anything to do with me because I was that guy. I lost my grip. What, were you, what are you supposed to do? With no substantive leads, police buckled in for a lengthy investigation. Officers visited truck stops and motels for hundreds of miles in every direction, showing Morgan's smiling school photo to clerks. Search dogs scoured fields and back roads. A $5,000 reward for information led to no breaks in the case. By nightfall, over 400 fearful community members gathered for a candlelight vigil praying for Morgan's safe return. But their hopes dimmed as days passed with no breaks. Even national exposure on America's Most Wanted generated nothing but dead ends. As leads dried up after two weeks, Glenn Violi strangely claimed a mystery man aimed a gun at him outside his apartment in a possible intimidation attempt. But the bizarre incident led nowhere. Investigators started knocking on doors to re-interview residents, hoping someone knew something they'd forgotten to mention earlier. New information from one child witness sparked brief optimism. But by week three, Morgan seemed to have disappeared without a trace. Detectives extended their search across state lines, following fruitless tips Morgan had been spotted everywhere from New York City to Texas. The longer she remained missing, the lower the chances Morgan would ever come home. Two and a half months after vanishing without a trace, Morgan Violi's case came to a shattering conclusion. In late October, a Tennessee woman stumbled upon small skeletal remains while walking her rural property. Though unidentified, their discovery sparked alarm bells. Police noted the location was just 40 miles from Morgan's Kentucky hometown. It seemed implausible that after endless fruitless tips and searches across half the country, Morgan's body rested just over the state border all along. Yet investigators sadly concluded the remains did indeed belong to the missing girl. Conclusively confirming their suspicions, police recovered a distinctive yellow hair clip near the bones, identical to the one Morgan wore when abducted. For Morgan's loved ones, the grisly find brought mixed emotions. Her parents Glenn and Stacy Violi prayed authorities were wrong, 
that somehow another explanation existed besides the unthinkable one facing them. But DNA analysis soon crushed those last thin reeds of hope. Morgan was gone. This is indeed a tragic turn of events, FBI Special Agent Dave Cole solemnly told the press. We are not going to stop until the person is found. In death, precious little evidence remained to catch Morgan's killer. Weather and wildlife scattered and destroyed her small remains in the months since her murder. With no clues left behind and no hints to the location where she actually died, investigators faced a colossal challenge. Just confirming her cause of death proved impossible after months of exposure. The abduction itself in the dump site pointed to an almost certain homicide, yet without more information, the trail ended there. Police publicized descriptions of two vans spotted near the discovery location, around the time Morgan's body was left there, hoping to generate leads. A burgundy van matching the description of her kidnapper's vehicle was seen July 25th. The other, an older white Ford van, was present for hours but never traced. Detectives followed the scant leads without success. As Morgan's case grew icy cold, the lack of answers compounded her family's pain. I want that person found, Stacy Violi urged at Morgan's funeral. In the cruelest twist of all, Morgan's own father Glenn remained clouded by doubt despite being cleared as a suspect. His daughter was stolen forever, but the shadow over Glenn remained. In March 1997, hope briefly resurged when police revealed they had actually recovered the burgundy kidnap van itself just days after Morgan's abduction. But the vehicle was stolen, wiping out its evidentiary value. By 1998, Glenn was fully excluded as a suspect, but the case still lurched aimlessly without real evidence to analyze. Years turned into decades as Morgan's family helplessly waited for her killer to show his face.